Hi, my name is Ian Sweat, and I work at Google. And today I'm going to talk about the challenges of Zero RTD in IETF Quick. So, first thing I'm going to start with some terminology. There's Google Quick or GQuick, which is an experimental protocol by Google and has been deployed for over five years. It uses Quick Crypto, and unlike TLS from IETF Quick. Quick or IETF Quick is the protocol standard by the IETF. And HTTP3 is the version of HTTP that runs over IETF Quick. So why would we want to do zero RTT? Because you can immediately send an HTTP request, allowing you to save a full handshake over regular Quick or two over TCP plus TLS 1.3. So the latency savings could be very substantial. Now let's walk through what a zero RTT handshake looks like. Quick has multiple encryption levels. So initial encryption, which is basically obfuscation, and that's used for things like the client hello and the server hello. There are handshake keys, which are derived from the client and server initials or client and server hellos. And then there's zero RTT keys, and these are the keys that we're talking about in this particular talk. And those are given to the client when resuming a connection and allow the client to send data in that first flight. We also have one RTT, which are forward secure keys to be used after the handshake completes. And I also use the term half RTT. And that's the term for one RTT data sent by the server before the handshake completes. Quick has multiple different packet number spaces. And packet number spaces, for the purpose of this talk, are mostly about what can be acknowledged. So only initial packets can acknowledge initial packets. Only handshake can acknowledge handshake packets. And only one or two packets can acknowledge zero RTT or one or two packets. So let's take a little look at what a successful zero RTT handshake looks like. On the left, we have the client. On the right, we have the server. The client starts by sending an initial and potentially zero RTT data. The server responds with its initial containing the server hello, handshake data, and one or two data all at once. So at this point, the server could have already responded the client's zero RTT data. Then the client has forward secure one or two keys and the handshake completes on the server side one round trip later. So it's also worth noting that at different points in time, the client and server have different encryption and decryption keys. I'm not gonna walk through every single key that's available, but the sequence is somewhat complex and it's very possible that you have keys that the peer does not have and vice versa. And they get dropped at various times. And in general and quick, the goal is to drop keys you don't need anymore as quickly as possible. However, that means that the peer, if it's still sending you information at that encryption level, you won't be able to process it and you'll have to drop it on the floor. There are also some restrictions on zero RTT. You have to have connected to the server recently, and you have to, most importantly, have persisted three pieces of information across three different layers. At the HTTP layer, you have to have persisted settings. At the quick layer, the token to allow address validation. And at the TLS layer, the new session ticket to allow TLS reception, as well as zero RTT. And you can also only send safe HTTP methods. So this is get, head, options, and trace, with get being the one that's most interesting for web use cases. And finally, the HTTP3 settings can't change between the initial connection and the zero RTT connection. So an, initial cha an additional challenge is there's actually a 3x amplification factor prior to address validation. So for some reason, zero RTT does succeed, but address validation doesn't, which is possible. You won't really be able to send much data in zero RTT. Additionally, Chrome doesn't persist new session tickets or any other zero RTT information to disk. So every time it restarts, you don't have any of the zero RTD credentials you might have had only a few minutes ago. So there are up to three different packet number spaces at once, and you have limited knowledge of which keys the peer has. Chrome blocks the use of zero RTD keys, as well as uh, the connection in general, when resuming on certificate revalidation. This means that resumption can be almost as fast that the RTT is small, and it takes a while to revalidate the certificate. For example, it may take 20 milliseconds to do certificate revalidation, and the RTT may be 10 milliseconds, in which case CRTT doesn't help you because the client never gets to use the keys. 
Zero to D packets can also be reordered. And servers need to decide whether to buffer them or discard them. So let's look at zero to D success rates for Chrome. So we have an over a 75% success rate on desktop with under 10% being rejected. And the majority of the cases it's not successful. It just wasn't attempted, which presumably means that Chrome didn't have the information. On Android, almost 40% of the time, we didn't even try zero RTT. So again, this comes from the correct fact that Chrome is not persisting this information to disk. And so every time Android Chrome restarts, you can't do zero RTT. So in the initial experiment back in November 2020, zero RTT was neutral at the mean for search, but had a slower tail latency and some regressions on other metrics Chrome side including an increase in handshake timeouts. One note on the data. The experiments are randomized in Chrome, and even if Quick or Zero RTT don't work at all, the data from those users are included. So first issue we hit, start with the amplification limit. The Zero RTT experiment was 10 times more likely to be throttled by the 3x amplification limit. And once limited, the server waits for the client to unblock it. And so it's just stuck there. This can delay the handshake substantially, even multiple round trips. The fix is fairly straightforward. ITF Quick includes a token in the client initial that the server previously sent you. When the server receives the token again, it can do address validation and make sure that the address doesn't change. However, as a result, the metrics, you know, in terms of search latency, didn't actually get that much better. A bit closer to neutral, but not quite. The rate of blocking, though, did improve. So the second issue is making sure when the probe timeout fires, you actually send at the correct encryption level. To provide a momentary background, the probe timeout is equivalent to the retransmission timeout in TCP in a lot of ways. There are a lot of differences, but the key here is you have outstanding data that's unacknowledged, and you're trying to recover from it and figure out which of it was lost and which needs to be retransmitted. And it happens on a timer. So, we have about twice as many handshake timeouts in Chrome in the zero RTT experiment than in the non-zero RTT experiment. So a handshake timeout in Chrome occurs when the client hasn't received anything for four seconds. So there are a lot of ways that in probe timeout to make a mistake and send the wrong information at the wrong time. However, this was our issue. So we had a large zero RTT response, which caused the server to be blocked by the amplification limit. And then the PTO was not armed. We had an optimization to bundle initial data, like the client hello, with an initial ACK. That rearmed the probe timeout for the future. And then we sent a little bit more half RTT data as the response to the zero RTT request. As a result, the server would never retransmit handshake data, and the client ended up in the deadlock. So here are some key fixes. If the probe timeout would have fired, make sure to execute it before sending new data. When the probe timeout fires, send in multiple packet number spaces. That means that even if you're not sure which keys the peer has, you'll get some feedback and be able to make forward progress on the handshake. And then the last one is always probe timeout initial and handshake data before zero RTT and one RTT data. So don't fill up the entire amplification factor with, you know, application data when you really should be like making sure the handshake completes. So the result is it fixed all the pre handshake timeout increase. However, it was still not faster than the control experiment without zero RTD. Let's talk about our third issue, inflated RTD samples during the handshake in particular. So why could the RTD be inflated? The peer might not have the decryption keys to actually process the packet. And so it can acknowledge it. And the, if so, the peer can choose to queue it, save it for later, and hope that the keys will become available. However, later when the keys become available, you process the packet, and then you send an ACK. But that extra queue time gets added to the round-trip time estimate. Additionally, during the handshake, the sender ignores the ACK delay prior to handshake completion. So that means that all of that time that the packet was sitting in the queue is added to the round trip time. So why do inflated RTTs slow down the handshake? Well, for one thing, they're incorporated into the probe timeout calculation. 
if a packet is lost, the probe timeout becomes very important to making sure the handshake makes forward progress. If the very first RTC sample ends up being a second, you end up with a three second probe timeout. Here are some fixes. First, send the delayed act based on the packet receipt time, not the processing time. That ensures that the act delay doesn't make the situation even worse. As an optimization, we always send packets of higher packet number space when possible, as particularly when a packet can cause a peer to generate new keys, which would allow them to process any of those queued packets. So for example, if a server retransmits an initial containing a client hello, also send handshake and half RTT packets to ensure that if those are queued, the newer packets generate the RTT sample. So as a result, we have a further reduction in handshake timeouts and zero RTT was looking much better. Last but not least, we had an asynchronous client bug. The client was sending initial pings until it finally timeout, and we can see these in server traces, but we didn't really know what was happening. The traces show that the client was never sending handshake packets, but the server low had been acknowledged, it was very clear. It turns out that Chrome has a max handshake timeout of 10 seconds. So this didn't happen forever, but it was a long time and it did cause the handshake to fail. It turns out the client was never driving the handshake keys, but why? Luckily, we got an external bug report with the netlog and could see this. And we noticed that any time certificate verification finished after the handshake completed, we never had handshake keys. So it was just an asynchronous race condition. And so often certificate verification finished first that we never noticed that if it finished afterwards, we didn't actually generate the keys. So it's a fairly simple fix, but it took us quite a while to go from the point of having traces to see it actually in the wild and see it on a client trace. We also have some little issues and some optimizations we did along the way. There was a period of time where we marked a packet and its data as retransmitted, even when it was not retransmitted. This could cause a hole if the packet was acknowledged later and information we thought was delivered was not actually delivered. We had an error in our size calculation. So that meant that the packet got queued and we actually tried to send it, it was bigger than we expected and we dropped it on the floor and closed the connection. We always process buffered packets in order and we stopped processing as soon as the first one failed to decrypt. This is a holdover from Google Quick where it worked perfectly, but it did not make sense in IETF Quick. And finally, we're delaying the probe timeout when we sent zero RTT packets. That means a trickle of client requests could great delay, delay retransmitting, say, the client hello, which might have been lost. We also did some optimizations along the way. So we delayed the server's first act until it can be bundled with a server hello. That saves one full size packet in cases when we haven't yet completed address validation. We coalesce pending acts whenever possible in multiple packet number spaces when we're setting something. And we coalesce handshake and a new session ticket with the server hello. Let's kind of go over everything and talk about the results. So we learned a lot of lessons. The most important is tooling is absolutely critical. Packet traces enabled us to root cause many bugs. And additionally, we have our packet traces searchable by the connection close reason. That allows us to specifically look for errors like handshake timeouts and figure out why they were happening. Sharing code with Google Quick was sometimes helpful and did accelerate our progress early on. However, it introduced some subtle bugs due to differences between the two that took us quite a while to locate in some cases. And getting probe timeout right during the handshake is very difficult. As you noticed, a number of these issues involve probe timeout, and it is quite a subtle item to get right. So finally, at the very end, Chrome Desktop had a 0.3% improvement, as did Android at the mean, and then a 0.6% improvement at the 99th percentile for both of them. So this is for search. Other applications definitely experienced larger gains, and search is heavily optimized. However, this was both worth launching and something that made search happy. So it was default enabled in September 2021, and we landed a number of fixes ever since then. However, this didn't save an RTT, did it, at least for search. Well, there are some challenges as we talked about before, but some additional ones include the fact that Chrome pre-connects. So in that case, there is no handshake latency because Chrome already has a connection. Not every search requires a new connection. You might've just searched for something else. 
And there are more bugs and optimizations to be found, I'm sure. There's definitely a tendency to stop looking for new, more issues as soon as you get it to be good enough to launch. And, you know, I'm sure that's the case here as well. So I want to say thanks to everyone at Google, uh, particularly Fan Yang, who helped so much uh, to make sure that Zero RTC was actually a success in production. Uh, and thank you all for listening. Have a great day.